In this following series of videos, we will see about PN junction diode and its physics behind it, how it behaves and so on and so forth. To start with, let's take, let's look at the symbol of a PN junction diode. Anyway, we will look in detail into the symbol in coming videos. Now, if we apply positive voltage to this P side and negative voltage to this N side, uh, let's take for now this side is P and this side is N. Okay. Now we apply positive voltage here and negative voltage here. Then this diode will allow current to flow through it. Okay. And if we apply negative voltage in this direction and positive voltage in this side, which means negative to the P side and positive to the N side, it won't allow current to flow through it. Okay. It's essentially an open circuit. Okay. This is how a diode behaves in a nutshell okay when it is when you apply positive to p side and negative to n side we say this is forward biased when it is forward biased it allows current to flow through it when it is reverse biased in this case uh, positive voltage applied to n side and negative to p side we call this as reverse bias in which it won't allow current to flow through it to understand how this diode behaves we go into the pn junction diode how it actually does and we start analyzing with equations and with qualitative analysis on this PN junction diode. Now to start with, let's take two pieces of semiconductor material. Okay. This being the first material and this the second material. I'm taking these two materials out of the same component let's say these two materials are of silicon one and two and now we are going to dope this first material with uh, boron which is a trivalent material or element so when we dope this material it becomes a p type semiconductor material and now if we, if we dope the second material with uh, phosphorus which is a pentavalent material or element then this piece of semiconductor becomes an n-type semiconductor material. Now, let's see. In this case, the number of positive charges present in this n-type will be equal to the number of negative charges present. And even in p-type material, it is the same. So, these two materials are individually charge neutral. Okay. Now, let's see how band diagram for this p-type material and n-type material look. Now, as, a, as we are taking, this is a silicon, the energy band gap at room temperature will be 1.12 electron volts. Okay. Now, if you take this as the bottom edge of the conduction band and this EV as the top edge of the valence band, and if we assume intrinsic Fermi energy level, that is EI, which is exactly halfway between these two, this EI will be, in this case, approximately EV plus EG by 2. And similarly, this is the same case with this material also. The band gap will be same because we assumed these two materials are of silicon. Okay, So, band gap will be same, EG. And we are assuming, of course, these two materials are at the same temperature. Now, as this is P time, the Fermi level for this material will be near to valence band. Okay, this is going to be the Fermi level for this particular P type. So I am taking a subscript as P. And now the Fermi level for this N type will be EF N. Okay, now we know these two equations that number of electrons equals Ni times E power EF minus EI by KBT. This KB, suff I mean K suffix B is Boltzmann constant and T is temperature. And the equation for P will be equal to Ni times E power EI minus EF whole divided by KBT. Fine. Now, <coughs> this difference EFN minus EI, if you use this particular equation for N and solve this, you will get an equation like kt ln of n d by n i. The reason why we write this is in n-type material, 
the number of electrons is approximately equal to nd where nd is the doping concentration that is number of dopant atoms per centimeter cube and num the number of holes will be approximately equal to na square by nd right and here number of holes will be approximately equal to na where na is the doping uh, concentration and uh, number of electrons here will be n a square over n a right and we are assuming these two materials are uniformly doped when i say uniformly doped we assume if you take at any point okay and if you take a centimeter cube around that point and see what is the doping it is uniformly distributed and the doping will be n a where n a is unit is number of atoms per centimeter cube if you take a centimeter cube they will be uniformly distributed so we assume the concentration is uniformly distributed now we know this difference ef minus ei is this okay let me mark with a different color here okay and the difference between these two okay will be kt ln of na over ni okay this will be useful in the next derivations when we derive certain equations these two equations will be useful fine now we have seen how these two in individual materials look like and how their band diagrams are and now if you see if you bring these two materials together now let's see when these two materials are brought together how they behave is let me take the p type material okay and uh, this n type material p and n okay now when we join together uh, this we call it as metallurgical junction okay metallurgical junction and we know that majority carriers in n type are electrons and majority carriers here are holes and the minority carriers here are electrons and okay let me write this again majority carriers here are electrons majority carriers here are electrons and minority are holes let me write those here majority and minority now when these two materials are brought together the majority electrons in this n type will see a uh, minority electrons here and there is if if you can see there is a concentration gradient from n to p or p to n due to this concentration gradient we will have a diffusion current okay due to this diffusion electrons tend to flow from this side to this side okay from n side to p side due to the diffusion and as this electrons go from n side to p side they uncover some of the dopant atoms now suppose if we assume the initial case where we have a positive ion which is phosphorus with one electron suppose say extra now let's take one positive negative if this electron goes into the p side then this is uncovered which means you have a positive ion without any associated electron to it as a result we can see a positive ion in the lattice structure of the silicon which is immobile and it is fixed in the lattice right so it is immobile charge fixed in the lattice it can move only the electron moves so the electron moves to this side so now you have some charge left over here which is positive ions and now similarly if you see the majority carriers in p, p type material is holes and minority in n type are holes so there is a concentration gradient so holes move towards this side and as a result similarly you will have a boron atom okay with one hole now if this hole moves into the n side this will be uncovered so you'll have negative ions in this side now if you see this phenomenon of diffusion of electrons to this side holes diffusion to this side what happens is this process won't continue longer because as they go into the other side they uncover charges and these charges are fixed in the lattice there will be a field electric field built between these two charges 
now if we look at how this region has you will have positive charges over here in n type material and the negative charges uncovered okay the fixed in the lattice the present like this now you will have an electric field in this direction now let's just assume instead of getting confused between these two electrons flowing and holes flowing let's stick to a notation of holes flowing okay holes are flowing from this side to this side now if we individually see this electric field built up from this side to this side you have holes here now they were flowing before due to which there is a electric field built up okay now this electric field will oppose further movement of the holes into this direction okay the electric field was built because of this holes diffusing and then the built electric field is going to oppose for the movement of the holes into the other side similarly if you see electrons also it will oppose them but is it entirely true that there won't be any diffusion current okay now see previously we saw there was diffusion current now let's see as you have this electric field in this direction okay the minotic errors here are holes right in n-type material when these holes come near to this junction this electric field will sweep these holes across the junction okay across this area and put it into the p-type material okay p side now if you look at this phenomenon you can say there is a drift current right and if you see this case where it is opposing okay then there should be holes not flowing in this direction but we are seeing a diode in open circuit condition right we didn't connect it to any potential or anything we just have a pn junction diode now if it is open circuit there should not be any current flowing right if we look at this phenomenon where holes are present here are swept across this then this phenomenon should be exactly balanced by the holes flowing in the opposite direction so this is known as the equilibrium condition where drift current drift current equals the diffusion current okay in the diode if you look at, so far we have seen for holes and for electrons also it holds good okay this is equilibrium case now if we assume this is an equilibrium case and temperature is fixed then it is thermal equilibrium of a pn junction diode in that case when it has settled i mean the flow of the current when the drift and diffusion currents have settled then this uncovering of the charges would have settled and there will be a fixed amount of width of the depleted region when we say depleted it means these ions here are depleted with the mobile charges okay this is called depleted region now let's see a uh, equation at equilibrium what will be the whole current density okay which is jp we can write this as jp drift plus jp diffusion now let's see how this looks okay now jp drift we know how the equation is this is q p mu p times the electric field plus and we know the diffusion equation minus q times dp dp by dx okay now let's keep these values and see what is the equation for p we have seen this before we have written also which is e i minus e f over k b t okay now this is the equation for holes now if you see dp by dx dp over dx will be equal to n i times e power e i minus e f over k b t the same times 1 by k b t times do e i by do x minus do e f by do x fine we can write this dp by dx as equal to p times okay p over kt times do ei by do x minus do ef by do x let's keep this in mind and see what is e e 
we define it as 1 over q times dou e i by dou x. Now if we substitute all this, this e equation back into this and dp by dp, dp by dx equation in this and we know the Einstein equation for dp is kt over q times mu p and if you substitute these equations we will get an equation like this okay mu p over e where e let me substitute this with one with dou e i by dou x minus q times dp over kt times p times dou e i by dou x minus dou e f by dou x. Now let me substitute this dp by kt by uh, with the equation kt over q times mu p. Okay, this kt over q and kt over q gets cancelled and mu p p times ei even here q q gets cancelled. This equation and this equation gets cancelled and the resultant is jp equals dou ef by dou x. And we know that under equilibrium jp is equal to 0, right? And uh, let me write this p times mu p is also there, okay? This is the equation. Now it is 0. It indicates, anyway we know that these values are finite, p and mu p, right? They are non-zero. Non so the only term should be 0 is def by dx. Then we can conclude that ef should be constant with respect to x, okay? With respect to x, it should be constant. Then ef by ex will be 0. Def by x, dx will be 0. Now, if you look at this diode, uh, when we join, we didn't see how the energy band diagrams look. Okay, these two energy band diagrams. When we actually combine them together, bring these two materials, P and N, together. Now, we have a P injection like this. Okay, under equilibrium. Fine. P and N. Now, the energy band diagrams for this, for P, let's see, it is like this, okay. For P, it is like this. The Fermi level is this. And now we know that Fermi level should not be changing throughout the PN junction diode when it is in thermal equilibrium. In that case, let's take this is EF. And for N type, this diagram should be like this, okay. This will be EC. And over the junction, it will be like this, okay, transitioning. And here, it will be like this. Okay, and EA will be like this. Okay, this is EC and this is EB. Now, by using this equation, okay, JP, we know that EF should be constant throughout the pin junction diode. This is how energy band diagram looks for a thermal equilibrium PN junction diode.